Guys, please take a second and subscribe to this channel. Please do me a big favor and like this video right now. What's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Car Audio Technicals. I should have named it like Tales from the, you know, like Tales from the Crypt. Uh, Tales from the Lab or something because some of this stuff is ugly. Uh, all right, so anyways, today what I want to do is I want to take three different amplifiers. I haven't done this beforehand, so it, I, we might see no difference. And in that case, you probably won't even see this video. Uh, probably we'll just delete it. But I'm gonna, I want to take three different amps and I want to burst 40 hertz like a kick drum. In fact, I'm going to use the track that we use on the 81 for the dynamic burst uh, power. The track is, is basically taken after the uh, IHF 202 dynamic power standard test, which is one kilohertz pulsed 20 milliseconds full uh, zero dB and then 480 seconds at minus 20 dB. So it's like a, a 20 millisecond burst, but it doesn't go to silence in between. It's just a, a 20 dB uh, decrease. That's the, the standard test for headroom or dynamic power. It's called IHF 202. It's been kind of, we tweaked it at DeMore Engineering for the 40 Hertz test since uh, bandwidth limited amplifiers can't do that test, uh, the original test because that's at one kilohertz uh, and in, in, in doing that we decided that 20 milliseconds is not nearly long enough for a 40 hertz burst so I believe we increased it to like 200 milliseconds on and, and a, a second and a half off or something like that but anyways that's the signal we'll be using it's on the 81 test disc I just needed a 40 hertz burst to simulate like a kick drum we're going to use the Klipsch RF7 Series 2 tower speakers as the load bank. And it should be a pretty easy load. Uh, they're rated at 8 ohms. I think I measured around 6 ohms at 40 hertz with the uh, IMSG Plus tool. But what we're going to do is do the burst and we're going to look at the scope. I've got the scope set up to capture. So as soon as it bursts, the scope's going to take a picture and we're just going to look at the output waveform and see if, you know, different amplifiers matter at all. The amp that's hooked up right now is the DeMore Engineering 301 Pro-Type Class AB. Uh, we're going to try that one. We're also going to try the Carver M500T, which is a multi-rail amplifier like a Class uh, H. And then we're going to try a very famous brand of Car Audio's Class D amplifier. It's one of the higher end famous brands. They make great stuff. I really don't want to like say the name just because I'm not trying to, uh, if, if some, you know, if it looks ugly on the test, I'm not trying to say anything about the company itself. Uh, if anything, I'm just trying to say something about Class D, which would affect, you know, all Class Ds. So. Um, I'm going to try to leave the brand out of it. Uh, I actually like this brand. Um, so anyways, enough of me jabbering. Let's, let's give it a shot. So here we go on the, uh, more engineering class AB. So you see it there. Super clean. Maybe I'll leave the camera right there and repeat it at a little bit of a higher level, see if we can get some clipping action in there, see how it, how it acts to clipping. This is one thing that amplifiers do differently. Some clip gracefully, some clip horribly. Turn up the level a bit. Let's try it again.
So there it is, clipped. This amplifier clips beautifully. Um, I like to do this amp first because it's, uh, it's kind of a blameless design to use a famous amplifier engineer's uh, word. Um, so anyways, there it is. 40 hertz burst, kick drum, looks beautiful, clips. The, uh, at clipping, when you see the sine wave kind of fall down, there's kind of like that slope there. That is the secondary rail capacitors discharging. That's completely a normal waveform. The big caps there as they discharge. The rails give a little bit of sag, and, and that's what you see there in that, that picture. So that's what we're seeing there. All right. Let's do this carver. Got the carver set up. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, okay. Some interesting stuff there. So it looks like there was a big peak, and then the bottom rail clipping is kind of nasty looking. It discharged the cap pretty hard and then the next peak up clips sooner than the one before it. I, I don't know, it confuses the multi-rail system or who knows, it's a very complicated amplifier with uh, lots of different sets of capacitors and rail voltages and stuff. But I think the takeaway here is that's not pretty. Okay. Class D amp, all hooked up here. This is a very famous brand, Class D amp, where I'm gonna talk about which amplifier it is, just the fact that it's Class D, and let's take a look at how it does during this same test. There's the results from the uh, carver still up there. I'm gonna erase these. Okay. Yikes. Well, I guess I get to publish the video. So you see the, uh, the oscillations at the top of the waveforms. This is typical of a class D and you probably even heard the high frequency, all that, that oscillation up there, that's all high frequency noise. So we're playing a 40 Hertz tone, but those oscillations are, you know, one kilohertz or something like that. You could hear it coming through the tower. It sounded different than when the, the last two amplifiers clipped quite a bit. So this is a, a typical class D problem. It's not specific to this amplifier here. It's on almost every class D I've ever tested. They just don't clip gracefully. In fact, nothing about that looks graceful. It looks like a triangle wave with breakout oscillation so anyways that's one of the things it's all it's trade-offs you want smaller amp for uh less money these are the kind of trade-offs that aren't published in the specs okay guys thanks for watching i promise on the next video or maybe the one after that i will have a microphone on my person so you don't have to listen to the echoes in this room anymore i know that uh the, the audio quality sucks on these videos. I'm trying to bring you guys great content, not so much you know production value, but I do realize they're annoying to watch when they sound bad. So I'm fixing that. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this stuff and thanks for giving me an opportunity and a platform to show you guys. All right. I'm out. All right, thanks for watching. Guys, please take a second and subscribe to this channel. Please do me a big favor and like this video right now.